Hello my dear viewers and welcome to 21st Century Victorian's first unboxing video. As I was writing the how to do your own research video, I sort of fell down a rabbit hole of looking at extant garments. Periodically I go do this in case I find something I love because why not? Except like bank account, but I digress, that's not important right now. Anyway, as I had fallen down that rabbit hole, I found the perfect piece and really just had to have it. After several days of waiting by the mailbox expectantly, much to the confusion of my neighbors, this has finally arrived. I wanted to wait until this weekend when I could actually really set up an unboxing video, but it's also raining and the box got wet. And I didn't think anyone wanted me to leave a 100 plus year old extant garment in a box because hashtag aesthetic. So we're gonna do a quick unboxing now, and then later we'll do an in-depth film of the garment once I've been able to get it out, make sure it's dry, all of that. So, without further ado, my paper scissors. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Also, this says eBay, it actually came from Etsy. But I guess they had eBay tape, so here we are. And you can see, luckily I was able to get it before the box got too wet, but it's still more wet than I wanna leave it in. All right, it's the tape. Very carefully. They put an adorable fairy sticker on it and I feel bad because I think I'm about to cut its head off, but it should have known better than to be between me and what's inside this box. I guess she didn't suffer too much. We have fancy eBay tissue paper. My hands are clean, I've washed them, I've taken my rings off. You know what, I'll even take my watch off so that there's absolutely nothing to snag on. And we have a pretty bow, okay, stand by. I'm a bit short for this table. So let's pull it out and move the box and move the cleverly labeled paper scissors. So this is from Vintage Velvet Clothing on Etsy and you can see we have this lovely blue bow on it. The package is very nice. So can I just slide it off? So excited. <laughs> I have been dying for this to get here. Oh good, it's in a trash bag, so we know that it's dry at least. I was so worried about that. I didn't think anyone would ship it without protection, but you know. All right, a big moment. Oh my gosh. So this is, according to the seller, a Victorian short cloak that was recently acquired from a private collection. It was someone who did antique car shows and had over 500 pieces. Obviously I couldn't afford all 500, but I saw the lace detail and the sequins and beading and just fell in love. There is, I was worried about this, so there's a little bit of wear on the back. I'll zoom in in a minute so you can see it. And it looks like there are places where the silk ribbon is just starting to disintegrate, unfortunately. Okay, so I have this laid out on my table now so that we can take a look at the details and the stitching. Unfortunately, one of the first things you can see is that a lot of the beading and sequins here has come off. Most of them are fairly intact, but this front one here I think is the worst. It does have this beautiful lace trim around the collar that it seems to be hand stitched in place. Oh no, it's, it's machine stitched. You can see the stitching here. So done. And then they've tacked 
the ribbon collar by hand to keep it in place too. But it comes in front to these bows, which have a hook and eye closure. You can see here. Now you can see that there's a lot of wear here inside the collar and at the back seam, which isn't surprising because this is where it would have rubbed on whatever was being worn under it. And my understanding is that the person who previously owned this actually did wear it quite regularly. Here we can see, because we've got this hole, and be very gentle with this, we can see that it's got some sort of stiffening layer inside it. I'm not sure what that is, but it does have some sort of stiffening layer under it. The lining, I think, is a silk satin. And you can see that we've got this center back seam here on the collar. It goes down the whole center back. And then the, the bottom of the lining is turned under and whip stitched by hand in place. And these are kind of big, messy whip stitches. I'm a little surprised. So what this means is that they made the lining and the cloak itself separately. They sewed them in at the neck and then they turned this hem here under and then whip stitched it in place. We've also got this ribbon trim at the bottom. You can see it's so, I think it's silk ribbon. You can see where it's just kind of starting to disintegrate with time. For the most part, it's in pretty good shape. It's You can see that it's pleated in a bit to give it that kind of um, effect. And then it's also scalloped at the bottom. And you see some of the scallops have kind of disintegrated, but it gives it an interesting scallop effect. When we come over to the side. So this is actually the front. We can see that there's more of the pleated ribbon here. We've got more of this black lace trim as well. More wear. And then it, this is that hook and eye it closes with. The other interesting thing I realized is it's got a couple of hooks and eyes to close it. So you closed, you had three fasteners on the front and on the other side, we have two of the original hooks, and I can feel where the third hook was, but it has broken off. But I love this darling effect of the bow it makes when you close the front closure. I just think that's precious. We come to the side so this is the side front this would be the right side front we can see it's picked up a couple threads from being in the studio we can see here it's worn through we've got that lining piece again and we've got some bare spots along the silk front pull it around we've got another little ribbon on the back You can see here the center back seam. Again, they obviously sewed it from the inside, which, I mean, why wouldn't you? Missing a little bit more in terms of sequins. It looks like some of the sequins have just kind of shattered and fallen off, which isn't really surprising. The other thing we've got is, um, I'm assuming they didn't originally use brown thread to sew this on, but where it's aged, you can see that the black thread has turned brown. Over here on what is the left shoulder, we have the worst wear pattern. And you can see that there's also some wear on the ribbon. And we can see more of that stiffener underlining underneath. This front is actually in pretty good shape, missing 
We're missing some sequins here, but we actually have whole patterns that are intact. Again, we can see where the silk trim at the bottom is just disintegrating. I'm not gonna mess with that because I don't wanna cause it to degrade further. But the lace itself is actually in really good shape. So my hope at some point is to get to take a pattern off of this. But for now, I just, I thought the trim and the beading and just the overall effect was so beautiful that I, I couldn't resist it. I'm a little sad about the condition, but not really surprised. This is why we don't wear unique antique garments. If you have enjoyed this unboxing and look at my extant cape and would like to see more, please let me know in the comments. I have a couple more pieces in my collection and would be happy to do videos on those as well. And I'm always adding to it. Hopefully there will also be a future video on taking a pattern and recreating a version of this cape, though likely without the sequins and beadings because I don't know that I have time for that. And if you would like to see that, let me know too. I remain, as ever, your faithful servant and 21st century Victorian, Francis Worthington.